Hi, my name is Jeff Orock, the meteorologist in charge at the National Weather Service office in Wakefield. I'll spend just a few minutes walking through our decision support page, which has been developed to support both marine operations as well as the Department of Transportation. The website is just weather.gov slash AKQ slash DSS underscore port. Once again, the website is weather.gov slash AKQ slash DSS underscore port. The purpose of this page is to help support the U.S. Coast Guard for safe maritime commerce, as well as the Virginia Department of Transportation aiding in the operation of the bridges and tunnels. Going to the live website, uh, you'll see the current conditions map, which is a wind uh, reports from across most of the Lower Bay and Hampton Roads. At any time when you're interacting with this page, if you wish to reset the page back to this main setting, you just click on Reset Page, and it will always reload um, the DSS page here for the, for the port. Um, you have links at the top to take you to the current weather. Uh, clicking on Current Weather will bring you to the current hazard map from across the region. I won't spend a lot of time going through this map, but you can see it overlays the current conditions combined with the radar um, into an interactive interface. You are able to move the interface around and zoom the interface as you would like. As you zoom in, more and more observations become apparent. You can also control exactly what is overlaid on the map. And again, I won't go through all of this. Just realize these tiles can be opened and closed, allowing you to interact a little bit more um, with, with the map. And, provide more information. You can actually overlay different types of observations and select the networks in which you want to try to display. You can also filter if you're looking for wind speeds of a certain criteria. Going back to the decision support page, you also see a link here for wind and buoy data. This is actually to support, again, both marine operations well as DOT operations. Clicking on the wind and buoy data link will take you to a zoomed-in view of the available observations provided by the National Ocean Service across the region. Uh, so we do have wind data over here at the Willoughby Degaussing Station, very close to the HRBT. We also have a wave buoy uh, located near Thimble Shoals in Virginia, as well as a wave buoy over here located near First Landing. The sensor on the Bay Bridge Tunnel is strictly wind observations as well as tides. By just clicking on the observation point, you can actually pull up the current conditions. You can see here that at this point it was a wave height of three feet with a period of four seconds. And then you can click on view details to get all of the buoy uh, data for that location going back for the past couple of days. The map on this page is also interactive, so you can actually move around and then click a new station, even once you've selected a station of interest. Back at the decision support page, we always will have a map of the current watches, warnings, and advisories from across the region. For quick reference, you will have a satellite and radar um, imagery as well. These are mouse over, so if you mouse over these links, here is the Wakefield radar. You also have access to Dover radar and the entire Northeast US, as well as satellite data. So anywhere you see these little links, these are our hot links, and they will allow you to activate and overlay what's currently going on in the map itself. Scrolling on down the page, um, this is where we start to get into a lot of our forecast information that will be very useful for everybody. Um, we do provide wind forecast um, every three hours. This is zoomed in on the Lower Bay and Hampton Roads in Southeast Virginia. So you can look at the forecast winds for every three hours going out to about 33 hours into the future. You can also look at the maximum sustained winds. So you can look at the direction as well as the magnitude of what will be the maximum winds through the next 72 hours. The same is true for the max wind gust. This allows you to look at the peak wind gust forecast across the area over the next three days. We do the exact same thing for wave heights, where we have a wave height forecast of every three hours, so you can see how the waves will be changing in time across portions of the bay. And this goes out to about 33 hours, so it allows you, again, to see how the waves are building or decreasing across the region. We also provide a max wave height forecast. This is the maximum wave height expected in the lower bay and offshore within the first 72 hours. So again, this is a peak wave height over a 72 hour period. We do also provide the outlook for the day one and day two severe thunderstorm threat. So if this would be for today and this would be for tomorrow, um, we'll highlight on the map as you mouse over these images. I will say if you click on any one of these images, um, the thumbnails down here at the bottom, it will take you to the website where you can find more of these types of graphics. 
The wind probabilities, um, we provide the sustained wind forecast as well as the gust probabilities for key locations. In the interface, we provide it for Sewell's Point as well as the pilot boarding area. So this is the probability of sustained winds of different wind speeds and the probability of wind gusts of different speeds. If you click on the thumbnail, it will open up the entire experimental wind forecast interface. There are many more stations um, which are available. You see Buoy 9, the Duck Buoy, Sewell's Point, the Pilot Area, Chesapeake Light, Wallops Island, Washer Creek, Cape Charles, the Baybridge Tunnel, Rappahannock Light, and York Spit. So for each one of these, I'll use uh, Buoy 9, for example. You can mouse over, and it will give you the probability of 34 knots, 43 knots, 48 knots, or 64 knots. And these are tied very closely to our small craft advisories, gale warnings, storm warnings, um, and again, hurricane force wind warnings. In this example here, you can see a rapid increase in the probability of, of forecast gales at Buoy 9 um, with a rapid decrease you know, once you get to about 6 a.m. The time is in local time, and the wind barbs that you see here across the bottom are the actual local wind forecast. So the wind barbs are our prediction. I'll zoom it down here a little bit. Um, these is our local forecast across the bottom, and this is model probability based on our forecast as well as all the wind model data we have available to us. A good example of a pretty extreme situation might be here at Duck where you see here later out in time, uh, you see the probability in red of gale conditions getting up to 60% and then peaking and then coming down quickly. But there's also some low probabilities of maybe upwards of 43 and maybe even 48 knots. And again, underneath that is our actual wind forecast giving you the wind direction. This would be a northwest wind at 20, at 20 to 25 knots, um, eventually getting up to a, a northwest wind at 25 knots gust up to 33 knots. Um, so you can kind of see how the wind kind of changes direction and time a little bit as well as the wind speeds. But again, this is the wind probability chart. It's good for planning and again, the, we do provide this for all of our locations across the lower bay as well as just off the coast. Going back to the uh, port weather page, we were just looking at the wind probabilities. The next is going to be the tide forecast. So we do provide the tide predictions. This is generated by the forecasters and updated at least twice a day. Uh, sometimes we will update this many more times a day if we are into a tidal flood uh, situation. We provide tides for the Baybridge Tunnel, uh, Fort Monroe, as well as Sewell's Point and the ferry, the ferry being the Scotland Jamestown ferry um, a little ways up the James River. So you can quickly access the uh, tide forecast um, in the interface and you can see the tides updated in the uh, pop-up window as you go along. If you click on the tide uh, thumbnail here at the bottom of the page, it will open up the advanced hydrologic processing system interface. And so within this interface, it is already zoomed in to the lower part of the Chesapeake Bay with the tide forecast already available. If you mouse over, here's an example mousing over the Baybridge Tunnel. Um, it will actually pull up the forecast for that location as you mouse over the, uh, the forecast. And then what you can do is actually click on the location. So here's an example. I'll click on uh, Fort Monroe. Once you click on the location, it will pull up the specific tide forecast for that gauge location. So it's an interactive map that allows you to go straight to the uh, AHAPS webpage for that gauge. Now this shows you the tide graph. It is a static map. So if you need a little bit more information, for example, for getting the exact tide and exact elevation, you can go look at the uh, tabular data. So here I'll click on the tabular data in Eastern Daylight Time, and it will show you the uh, observed data um, here on the left and then the forecast data here on the right. So you can see here if you're looking for a specific forecast elevation at a certain local time on a certain day, uh, for example here this would peak out at 2.8 feet um, on April 2nd at about 0800. Um, you can get that information as well as the past data. And the past data information goes much further back out into the uh, past. Uh, but on the right hand side here you see all forecast information. So if you need exact numbers, um, that is how you'll access that information right off the AHAPS webpage. But once again, you can get those forecasts for any location um, across the bay um, on the AHAPS page. The other resource available down here in the thumbnails is the hourly forecast for different locations across the region. 
and I'm going to move the page up here just a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm clicking on. So this is the hourly forecast for the uh, pilot area, which is located just east of the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. Um, the next is the hourly weather forecast for the port, and this would be pretty representative of the weather conditions at the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel. The hourly weather forecast for the Upper James River is very close and just southeast of the Jamestown Scotland Ferry. So you have quick reference to the hourly weather forecast um, for different locations um, across from the mouth of the bay to the James River to further up the James River by the ferry. Scrolling down the web page on the DSS page, you do provide a quick link and quick reference to uh, word forecasts for across the area. So we provide a link to the uh, Cape Henry forecast, the forecast for the mouth of the bay, which is going to be a marine forecast, uh, the James River forecast, which is further up the James River close to the Jamestown Ferry. There are also links here to the uh, area forecast discussion where you can read the technical reasoning behind the forecast as you scroll down. We do have a long-term, short-term sections here as well as a marine section when we're dealing with vessel traffic and what the winds will be doing um, along the coast as well as within the port. Marine weather messages include anything like small craft advisories and gale warnings. Uh, so you can see here in this example there was a gale warning in effect when I did the recording here. Coastal Bay and observations. Uh, this is just a quick summary of some of the uh, conditions across the region. This is a marine product summary. Starts way up north and you can actually scroll through here and eventually get the uh, local weather conditions from across the Chesapeake Bay, the James River, as well as just offshore. The ports and flood and current information. This is actually from the ports interface, the NOAA ports uh, webpage, and it's a quick reference that does give you a little bit more information at key locations in regards to tides, wind speeds and directions, air temperature, water temperature, as well as uh, current flow and how fast the water is actually moving. Uh, this is usually probably more in terms of shipping than it is for uh, static locations like the bridges and the tunnels. We also provide several links to other interesting uh, websites that could be of interest, as well as our main web page, the uh, Chesapeake Bay Port System, which we just mentioned, the More Tides Forecast, which is our AHAPS web page, um, our Wave Prediction Model, uh, which is also available online, and a few other links here. But for the most part, most of the information that you'll want to access when trying to make critical decisions will be in the upper part of the page from the very top of the page with some of these current conditions across the region and buoy data as well as down here in the thumbnails with your wind forecast as well as your tides forecast and your hourly weather forecast. So once again, all of this is available um, on our main page here which is uh, weather.gov slash AKQ slash DSS underscore port. If you have any questions about the page, please feel free to email me at jeff.orock at noaa.gov. That's J-E-F-F -F dot O-R-R-O-C-K at noaa.gov. Let us know if you have any questions and if there's any more information you feel needs to be added to the page to help with your critical decisions. Thanks for listening and we hope you enjoy the page.